then can we get four packs of mayo? Yep. Whoa, jackpot. <laughs> I got a ton of mayo. Crisis averted. Emma's changing it up. Yeah, she likes it. <laughs> she climbed over there because Jamie stopped paddling to check the map and she thinks he's gonna pull out a fishing rod. So this is where there are supposed to be pictographs. It might be hard to see when it's wet too. Those things there. type of animal. I'm not sure what it is. A beaver maybe? Just the colors on the rock alone are incredible. Let's mention how huge they are. So cool. About to do the almost 3K meter portage Rock Lake to Louisa, our only portage of the day. It's a long one. Quick break. How far do you think we've gone? More than half. More than half? Huh, pretty good. So it took about an hour to do that. We started at like 9.35 and it's 10.35 now. It didn't feel like an hour, did it? It felt pretty quick to me. I mean, I wasn't carrying the canoe. So James just calculated it was actually 40 minutes because we took a 10 minute break and we got here five minutes ago. <laughs> so about 45 minutes to do that. It's not a competition or anything. Really wanted to like get it done. You could do it in 40, 45. Yeah. But we took it. Some otters down there. Pretty far away. The 
this really beautiful site is available. Um, there, the only negative is that there is actually two sites, one there and one there. I can't see them from here, but they're really close. And this lake is fully booked for tonight. So it could get a little noisy. And there's a site down that way that we've stayed at before that we really like. So we're contemplating going to see if that one is available. Um, in the meantime, someone may scoop this one up. So tough decisions. It's a very busy lake, Lake Louisa, and it's a busy time of year. And we're pretty early, but there's a lot of action on the lake already. So um, that mixed with the um, rainy weather, I think some people are leaving their sites late as well. So, um, I mean, you technically really shouldn't be arriving. You have until two to leave a site. So if someone arrives early, um, it's kind of their problem. They have to find whatever's available. Jamie's gone to check the other site while I wait here with Emma. site is really, really big. <laughs> it's not usually the kind of site, like, it's being so big that we would go for. It's kind of a party site, but um, it's really pretty. <laughs> Very large. So the fender box is completely full. Um, it's not above the opening, but it's above the ground full, like in the box part, um, which is bad, <laughs> very bad. Um, so that would not be a pleasant experience, but that's where you have to you go poop, is in there, or dig a cat hole um, and cover it really far from shore. But um, I'm anticipating that people probably have used the washroom in other spots because of that, potentially. And obviously it's a very well used site because it's so nice and so big. Um, so that is a big downside. It really needs a new Thunderbox. Here comes James. I can't wait to hear the verdict. We're leaving. Looks like we're leaving. No freestyling. That's a happy dog. Lunch snack time? Mm -hmm. Pepperonis, baby bells, pretzels. It's the best. What's this?
bite. You got a bite? I was paddling against the wind. And so I got the bite, so I had to put the paddle down because I was trolling. And then the wind blew me backwards and it created slack and then he got off. Ah, uh, <sighs> bummer. Where's my other shoe? Emma has stolen one of my Crocs, as usual. Wow. It's a lot of more aggressive blade than we normally use. Yeah, it's the aggressive one. A lot sharper than the other one. Thanks, Agua Canyon, for sending us this great new blade. They did send that to us. <laughs> Kind of wet. <laughs> wow. Nice. Good night.
It's like glass. Yeah, it's really calm. Not you, you're not calm. fought hard and now he's just like a log. Yeah. A typical lake trout. You kind of, you get it and then you're like, oh, was I snagged? Because it just feels, he's not, it doesn't feel like a fish right now. It just feels like I'm pulling up a log. Oh, no, he's a little, little guy. Okay. There he is. Ah. Hey, I'm on the board. <laughs> that guy was really small. And he fought really hard at first. Cooling down on Florence Lake. We're going from Frank to Rents. We were on Florence and there was no portage in between the two lakes from Florence to Frank. We just paddle through. And so now we're going to Rents where we're staying. It's just a short portage. It's busy. We passed three groups out there on Frank. Water level's really low, and then we see this beaver dam that's broken. So this beaver dam must have been flooding the area. Yeah, I was thinking it was people crossing the beaver dams, like too many people. Breaking all the beaver dams. This is another one. one. We made it to camp by about 12.15. Um, it was pretty easy, not a very long day. We passed a lot of people on the way here. Very, very busy. Um, but we're here, we, we're a little muddy because of the low water levels, um, but we're ready to have lunch, which we've actually, 
we didn't have breakfast today. We had a couple cliff bars and coffee and saved our real breakfast for when we get here so we can cook it up and have like a breakfast brunch situation. I'm excited for it. Do it. Ready. Ready for eating. Mm, thank you. Okay. Coffee number two and breakfast dessert at like two o'clock. <laughs> so how many nights have we slept in this tent? Many nights. Did you notice the elastics are wear wearing? Yeah. I wonder if you can re-elastic them. I'm sure you can. Wow. Jamie's gone fishing, and I'm gonna process some firewood for our campfire. Um, and then relax, maybe, for a while. new blade a lot. It's the uh, has a more aggressive tooth on it and actually rips through the wood a lot faster than the standard blade. <laughs> This 
This is like a crazy dragonfly site or like a feeding frenzy area because they're like going crazy. There's a bunch of little bugs everywhere and the dragonflies are just swooping around eating them. Never seen anything like it. Oh, okay. They're just swooping around, eating everything. Look at them. They're everywhere. It's amazing. Yeah, eat all the mosquitoes. I love you guys. Oh, there's a swarm of mosquitoes behind me. Dragonflies. Where are you at? I'm already out of here. I'm kind of in the line of fire here. <laughs> Yummy. Good? Mm-hmm. This guy's trying to get the leftover pepperonis. The slug? The slug. Yeah. What kind of chocolate do you want? There's the standard, then cookies and cream, and Reese's peanut butter cup. I'll go with standard. I'm kind of a traditionalist. Do you like vanilla ice cream too? I do. You ready to go to bed? You sleepy? Okay, ready to go? Where's Bob? Go lie down. Good night.
So last night I almost caught on fire. Is that right? I had to save you. A spark came out of the fire and landed somewhere on me while I was getting the water boiled for dinner. But Jamie, you had a look and you couldn't find it. So I kept doing what I was doing. And then all of a sudden I saw smoke coming from my left side and I smelled burning. And my sweater is all burned. It was like on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but Jamie did get it off of me at that point, so I didn't fully ignite. But uh, the sweater is needing patching now. Adventures in the backcountry. Turds, anyone? If your dog poops on a campsite, um, you should be picking it up and putting it in the privy. Mm -hmm. Especially or, if it's this close to the water. Well, yeah, but anywhere really. Same with people, you shouldn't be going to the bathroom anywhere but the privy. Yeah. Or you dig a hole and bury it. It's not fun, but it's, it's what you do. Okay, I just walked two big dog dumps back to the box, the pooper, the privy, thunder box, and dumped them in there. So the campsite is totally clean, and we left some firewood under some bark, ready for the next people. Fire pit's clean, no garbage, and doused in a lot of water, completely out. Um, that's how you really want to be leaving your campsite. Also do a walk around to see if you've left any little little things that may have fallen, pieces of plastic, pieces of garbage, and clean it up. So this is a river. Gallipo. Gallipo River. Welcome Lake over there.
week. having a snack before the uh, 2,000 kilometer portage. 2,000 meter. 2,000, two kilometer, 2,170 meters. This one feels really long, <laughs> like longer than the 3k one that we did on day one. Maybe because that was day one, we're all excited, but our bags are lighter now, mine is. I mean, I've taken on some of Jamie's weight, but the food has disappeared. Um, so it's not crazy, but it's so long. So this has been the busiest trip we've taken. Um, in Algonquin Park so far in terms of passing people and seeing people. Um, part of that is because we're doing this loop backwards um, to what would typically be done. Uh, typically people want to do the shorter portage um, first when their bags are heaviest. Um, we're going backwards because we had to change our booking very last minute, basically a week away. We had a different trip planned um, with Jamie's mom and partner, and uh, unfortunately she broke her ankle a week before the trip, like the weekend prior. So um, that trip was a little bit even like less portaging, less paddling, a little easier, just to, because it was the first time. It would have been their first time. So we changed it last minute. This is what was available. And so we've seen a lot of people. What I'm getting at anyway, is the last group we just passed, had a lady carrying a three or four year old in one of those front carry packs. And that's just so cool. I just think that's so awesome. Like, good on them. It's probably a lot of work, but it was a group of five. Two guys with the canoes up front and then three others. And one person just carrying a toddler. And, oh, is that a bug biting me? It's gone. Okay, I'm almost stripped over something. Anyway, I think they were single carrying. It's also where I'm going with this long, dragged out story. I think they were single carrying. I mean, we'll find out if there's nothing at the end of the portage, but I think that was it. I think they were single carrying with a toddler. Amazing. Did you see the lady carrying the toddler? Yep. Yeah. They were single carrying. There's no stuff here. Yeah, they single carry them. That's awesome.
really sinky. Yeah, I know. It's just that there's a lot of rocks here. Oh, here. You can get out on this log. It's a right and a left, but they're different. They're different sizes. What happened there? People have probably got the foot stuck in the mud. And lost, it. lost one in the sinky mud. James can uh, fish the waterfall a little bit. But she was behind me and I was crouching down here to uh, take a photo of the falls. And she pushed me with the rock. This rock. Oh, James got one, I think. Nice. Two brookies. Two brookies. Nice. That first one was a lot bigger, eh? Yeah, it was twice as big. Too bad I didn't get close enough to see it. Very rocky.
almost done. A busy put in. It's narrow and motorboats are allowed here, so. We had some tailing us on the way in, so we were paddling in. Are you ready to go home? Mm hmm. Are you tired? Hmm.